Hi friends, welcome to JS Frameworks. So today we will see how we can create a web application using multiple micro frontends and how effectively we can share the resources among these micro frontends using the webpack externals. So for today's video, I have created two Angular 10 applications. One which will serve as the container or the shell application and other which will act as a micro frontend. And for creating the micro frontend, uh, we are making use of angular elements web component so uh, we have made use of angular element to create the web component so i had covered these steps in a previous video if you have not seen it please check it out so initially we will build the micro frontend application using the dev kit build angular which is the default uh, builder for building the angular uh, applications so we have built our application and uh, it has generated a micro frontend folder in the dist so you can see that uh, it has created multiple js files so each of this will be needed for running the micro frontend so uh, it would be more convenient if we could get a single bundle which can be consumed by the container so that it will be easy to maintain for the exact same purpose we have a library called ngx build plus which will generate a single bundle uh, based on the configurations which we pass so uh, if you check the code here you can see that it accepts a uh, property called single bundle what it does is it will remove the polyfill uh, entry so that it will not generate a polyfill.js and also it will uh, turn off the runtime chunk so that runtime dot js will not be created and the webpack configuration will be part of the main.js file itself now let's change the target builder for each of our applications so i am changing it to ngx build plus and i have installed this already as a dev dependency so here in the serve step also we'll change it so this is our uh, container application and similarly we will do the same for uh, our micro frontend application as well so now let's add two more options to our uh, build steps in both our applications so uh, one is the vendor chunk as false so that the vendor.js uh, bundle will not be created and it will be created as part of the main.js file itself and as we saw earlier the single bundle true uh, that is the option which uh, removes the polyfill as well as the runtime so uh, i have added it for the main application and now let's add it for the micro frontend also so uh, i have done both this so i have rerun the application using ngx build plus as the builder and it has completed successfully and let us go and see the disk folder you can see that the vendor file and the runtime file are no longer available it has been merged to the main.js file and the polyfill.js file is still created however since this contains only the zone uh, file <laughs> we need not use it in our main container since it is already an angular application it will already have the polyfill with the zone so I have hosted the uh, generated micro frontend JS uh, using local server on the port 8080 and also in my container application uh, I am loading the uh, JS file in, in a script tag uh, through the JavaScript and I am rendering the custom element here uh, which is the web component uh, my element so uh, I have also run our container application so now let's see what happens in our uh, application so you can see that the uh, micro front end this is our web component it has been rendered successfully so uh, one of the issues uh, while using angular elements is that you can uh, notice the size of our uh, generated bundle so if you go here you can see that the main.js uh, file size is almost around uh, 2 MB so suppose we have multiple uh, micro frontends in a web page like it can cause huge bundle size in our application so now let's see how we can make use of the webpack externals 
in order to optimize our bundle size so that the resources like angular uh, angular bundles which can be shared across the micro front ends so ngx build plus uh, provides an option to extend the angular's uh, webpack configuration so we can make use of the extra webpack configuration option and we can provide an external uh, web webpack file and uh, let us do that for our uh, main application in both the build and the serve steps and we will also repeat the same for our uh, micro front end application and uh, let's create a uh, configuration file here in the root folder the externals is an option which is available in the webpack configuration which provides a way of uh, excluding the dependencies from the generated bundles instead these uh, dependencies will be uh, resolved at runtime so there are uh, many ways in which you can implement this so uh, for our example we will be following this model the root model so that uh, the dependency will be available as a global variable and we will be adding this through a script tag uh, we will see how we can do it so currently i will add this uh, all these packages as external dependencies so when the bundle is generated these will not be present inside the bundle so the external properties has uh, a key is a basically a key value pair so as the key you can provide the name of the dependency and the value will be the name of the global variable so how can you get this uh, global variables name so this is actually provided within the umd uh, bundle of e each of these packages so in case of angular core if you go to the node modules angular core you can see a folder called bundles and inside that there will be a core.umd.js file so if you open that you can see that uh, it creates a, a property called ng and inside that a property called core so global is basically our uh, window object so for each of these libraries they will be creating a key uh, similar to this so we can get the name of each of the package in this manner and we can add it in our external file so you can check any other like rxjs for example so i am going to rxjs inside the bundles you can see the same way they have provided the global variable name i have built our micro front end application after the configuration change now let's uh, see the generated bundle so you can see that the bundle size has been considerably reduced it is only uh, 13 kb so now the only thing remaining is like we need to add the global variables so that can be done in the, our container application so we need to go to the angular.json and in our container application scripts we need to add the uh, the path of the umd files from which we need to get the uh, global variables so this script uh, either can be given as an a string of arrays or you can provide uh, you can provide a bundle name so that you can split up this script dot uh, js file into multiple files so that they can be loaded parallelly so i have done this here and the input is the path of our umd file so now i have served the container application and I have refreshed our uh, container page so now you can see that we are receiving an error called uh, no provider for compiler factory so what happened here is that uh, since we are referring to the umd.js files so by uh, default all the uh, libraries or the packages which are published are uh, still not supporting the IV format so uh, they need to be uh, compiled using the ngcc compiler uh, to convert them to iv format so uh, by default when we uh, build or serve an application you can see that uh, it will be converting them to iv but only the format is 2015 so since we are using the umd format we need to add a few steps 
in our uh, post install uh, script so we will add this post install uh, step in our package.json so uh, what it does is like uh, once the uh, packages are installed it will run this step and it will convert uh, our main target is the umd so that is the main so uh, once we add this and we need to run the npm install so now what it does is uh, once the install is completed it will automatically uh, run the ngcc compiler on the umd bundles so it will cover all the packages which are in the view engine format so the npm install has completed and you can see that uh, all the umd files uh, have been processed by the ngcc uh, compiler now let's run our uh, application so the application has been served now let's refresh the page now you can see that uh, the error has changed now uh, we are receiving a different kind of error it is saying like uh, the we need to use the new operator on the html element constructor so uh, this is again because we are using the umd format which is uh, currently like generated in the es5 format so uh, we need to include a polyfill here so uh, i have added this library uh, the web components web components js so we need to add a step in our polyfill.js yeah so uh, once we add it we can refresh our page so you can see that uh, the micro front end has been rendered successfully we can see that all the uh, keys which we had seen earlier like the ng core ng common all these are available in the global scope one last scenario that we will cover today is when we run our uh, application in production mode so for this purpose i have turned off the output hashing for the uh, micro front end project and i have run both the applications in, in production mode so i have served it in production mode for uh, the mosaic now when i refresh the application uh, you can see that we are receiving another error that is uh, cannot enable production mode after platform setup so this occurs mainly because currently we are sharing a singular uh, uh, like single angular instance across multiple uh, applications so uh, in our micro front end application uh, we have called the enable prod mode so either you can comment this uh, code but in case you need to run your micro front end as a uh, standalone application it can cause problem so another option will be to include this in a try catch block so uh, what it does internally is that it will just check uh, whether the mod is logged and in case it is logged then it will be throwing this error otherwise it will set the der mod as false so since this is already set as false in the container application we can safely uh, skip this step so that's why i have put it in a try catch block now let's rebuild the application so the application has been rebuilt and the page has been refreshed now you can see that the application is working as expected hope this video provided enough information to help you optimize micro frontends using webpack externals see you soon thank you